Hi, this is Fazana again. Welcome. <laughs> In this video, part two, we'll cover some more interesting exam questions. I hope you've watched part one. Please also watch all my videos on volume and surface area on cubes, cuboids, prisms, cones, spheres, and pyramids before watching this. So you're really comfortable with the basic concepts and are comfortable using the formulae. Um, this is a process, so you must do it step by step. <laughs> all right, okay. Now I assume you've watched all of them, so let's go for the questions. Okay, a tank measures 15 centimeters by 10 by 10. The tank is half full of water. Every single word is relevant here. Remember, they're going to try and hide things. So you must make sure that you're reading every single word here. So that would be five centimeters. Okay, good. A solid metal sphere with radius two centimeters, two there, is placed into the tank. Assuming that the sphere sinks to the bottom of the tank, right there, <laughs> um, calculate the amount by which the water level in the tank rises. Okay, so we've got that five centimeters there. So, sorry, that's, <laughs> that's five, isn't it? Yeah, okay, so that's five. So now you can tell when the sphere goes in, it's going to actually displace it so the volume of the sphere will be that bit there here yeah? and if you've watched part one we've done a similar question um, you can tell when the um, sphere goes in that won't change and that won't change here yeah? all right so let's calculate the volume of the sphere first so volume of sphere and always write the formula first. So we've got four thirds pi r cubed, and then go stick the numbers in. So we've got four thirds pi, and the radius was two cubed. Okay, and you get 33.51. Okay, so that 33.51 centimeter cubed, the volume of the sphere, must be the volume of that bit there. But because the 15 and 10 won't change, then you know the height, yeah, the increase in the height, so we'll just call it H1, equals the volume, the total volume divided by 15 times 10, because you know the volume will be the um, length times the width times the height. So if we want to find the height, we have to do the volume divided by the length times the width, okay? And we get 0 0.22 centimeters. Okay, so that is the amount by which the water level rises. Okay, yeah? Okay, it's an odd question because the fact that they've told you it's half full of water you would think they would actually ask, so if they'd asked for the new level, that would have made more sense, considering, you know, they've said it's half full, and of course the new level would have been 5.22 centimetres. Okay, yeah, so that's your answer. Okay, so that would have been a better question. <laughs> okay, next question. A water tank is 50 centimetres long, 34 centimetres wide, and 24 centimetres high. It contains water to a depth of 18. Okay, cool, but that whole thing is 24, yeah? Okay, four identical spheres are placed in the tank. So I'm gonna draw my four spheres, and they all go in, yeah? I'm already smiling, because my diagram's so cute, okay? All right, and the water level rises by 4.5 centimeters. So can you see this time they're doing it the other way around? Yeah. So what we've got to find is we've got to find 
the volume just placed again. Okay, so the four spheres will occupy that bit there. Okay, and we have to calculate the radius of the spheres. Okay, so the volume displaced. equals that's not going to change that's not going to change yeah will be 50 times 34 and you can see it rose by 4.5 so times 4.5 and you get 7650 centimeter cubed okay now these this volume is for the four spheres yeah so the volume of one sphere will be seven six five zero divided by four which is one nine one two point five okay now the volume of a sphere we know the formula is four thirds pi r cubed and that's equal to the 1912.5. Now, I hope you're good with rearranging formula. If not, please watch my rearranging formula videos. Yeah. So it's like we're trying to free our um, subject, which is the R. So we cubed it first, then we multiplied it by 4 pi, because remember that 3 sort of applies to the whole. Um, thing there and then we divided it by three so you start off with what's closest to it here yeah? so now we go backwards and we go and we times three first then we divide by four pi and then we will cube root it okay so on your fraction button you go r equals and then you take the 1912.5 times three divided by 4 times pi and then you cube root your answer and if you do all that successfully <laughs> you'll get r equals 7.7 .7 centimeters okay if there's any question that you don't feel comfortable about just rewind it and just make sure you um, work through it again yeah don't move on to the next question until you're really comfortable with um, the question before. Okay, all right, cool. Next question. ABCD is a triangular base pyramid. The base ABC is an equilateral triangle, okay, so the, with sides five centimeters. So again, mark something on the diagram. We know that all the angles will be 60. And if it's equilateral, we know everything is five centimeters. Yeah, but just make sure we know that 60 as well and that 60 as well. Okay, yeah. Okay, the volume of the pyramid is 36 centimeter cubed. Um, calculate the per perpendicular height. Okay, good. Okay, so let's write the formula first. So we know the formula will be a third times the base area times the height okay and we're told that the volume is 36 centimeter cubed okay so we go a third uh, we don't know what the base area is so here we go base area and let's now look at it Okay, it's uh, not a right angle triangle, so we know it's advanced trigonometry. And how do you find an area in advanced trigonometry? You know, we go half A, B, sine C here. Okay, but as long as you know you've got your V, then you really don't have to label the triangle. And can you see you've got your V there? Okay. So we're going half times 5 times 5 times sine 60. 
Okay, and you'll be getting 10.825. Okay, so that's the base area. So you've got 10.825 times the height, which we don't have, equals 36. Okay, so again, you can tell we're rearranging the formula. But here, we can easily calculate a third of um, 10.825, which will give you 3.608. So we've got 3.608H equals 36. Yeah? Now, this looks very much like, you know, 2x equals 4. So we'll we'd be dividing by 2, so we'll divide by that number there. Yeah? So h equals 36 divided by 3.608 and you get 9.98 centimeters yeah and if they say to the nearest centimeter then you'd have 10 centimeters okay yeah so can you see once you start writing the formula it's, everything sort of falls out because you, it's giving you a sense of direction. Yeah, but if you start writing the numbers straight away, you just get really confused. Okay, yeah. The best questions, of course, are things that have combined topics. So here with the volume um, and advanced trigonometry. Yeah, so um, we need to get you to be an expert on everything. Okay, so you can even identify it. It doesn't slow you down. It doesn't make you stumble and fall. <laughs> All right. Okay, next question. A solid sphere and cone are shown. Uh, volume of sphere, volume of cone. So they're nice enough to give us the formula. I like to put a third up there. Yeah. Okay. What is the volume of the sphere to the nearest cubic centimeter? So we've got the formula, so we don't have to write it. So we've got four thirds times pi, and the radius is five, so times five cubed. And you get 523.6, so that would be 524 centimeter cubed to the nearest cubic centimeter. Okay? Says the cone has the same volume, so remember we we do that horizontal layout and we do equals. Yeah, what is the radius of the cone? Yeah, to so one decimal place. <coughs> okay, so the volume of the sphere of the cone is one third pi r squared and we've got the height times 9.6 and that is equal to the 524 okay i always like to do my numbers so a third of 9.6 is 3.2 pi r squared equals 524 okay let's rearrange so we squared it first and we multiplied it by 3.2 pi. So now we're going to go backwards and divide by 3.2 pi and square root it. Okay? Yeah. So we go R squared equals 524 divided by 3.2 pi. And then we square root our answer and we get 7.2 centimeters to one decimal place. All right, yeah, okay. You can tell after a while the questions look very similar. Um, so once you've done, once you've practiced um, quite a few of them, you'll find that in the exam, it'll look very much like what you've seen before. So you won't be fooled or confused, yeah. Okay, the diagram shows a tank in the shape of a cuboid. It also shows a container in the shape of a cuboid. The tank is full of oil. Okay, so it's full. The container is empty. 35% of the oil from the tank is spilled. 
So we know we've only got 65% left. Okay, the rest of the oil is put into the container. Yeah, so 65% of the volume. Okay, work out the height of the oil in the container. So again, we can draw it, it makes it easier. Yeah, so that will all go in there. And we have to find the height. Won't, what won't change? That won't change, and that won't change. Yeah, so at some stage we're going to be dividing by that. Okay, so let's find the volume of the, um, the tank. So volume of tank. But remember, it's only 65%. And we should be able to um, do the multiplier. So 0 0.65 times 40 times 50 times 60, which will give you 78,000 centimeter cubed. Okay. Now, again, we know our height would be 78,000 divided by the 80 times 70 and so the height would be 13.9 centimeters to an appropriate degree of accuracy so we'll put one decimal place or three significant figures all right yeah good that's all for now i hope that was helpful and easy to understand and you know I must have uploaded a part three. <laughs> um, so do join me. The questions are captivating and so enjoyable. Yeah, keep practicing. Work hard, 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 hard. And remember, you're in control. Take care. Until next time. Bye.